Hey, it's Jerry from BlackSoldierFlyBlog.com, and um, this is a follow-up to a test that I did with a, this 12-gallon biocomposter that had an issue with the pine bark that I used as the bulking agent. I filled it, had filled it up to about here with pine bark and uh, hardwood lump charcoal uh, as a, a matrix for the colony to live in and uh, as part of the filter and drain system. But the, um, I've used different batches of pine bark in the past with great results. The shape of the, bu the bark is great. It uh, works as a moisture barrier, barrier um, sorry, moisture buffer. So it absorbs and holds moisture, absorbs excess moisture and retains moisture so that the unit doesn't, the, the waste doesn't dry out inside of the unit. So uh, very happy with the results last year. And uh, I think this was the fourth bag that I had tried. And... Uh, it released a bunch of resin all at once and it coated the sides of the uh, composter and the larvae also with pine resin and it distressed the larvae because they breathe through their skin. So uh, I will link to a post on the forum where I describe the problem and there's some photos of um, uh, part of the solution which was I washed, basically washed the contents with Dawn Ultra dish soap. Uh, Dawn Ultra actually they promoted as uh, saving wildlife. They use it to uh, clean seabirds that have been exposed to oil spills and things like that. Um, my concern was that insects, uh, some soaps are insecticidal, but I believe those are lye based and uh, for one thing the Dawn really did cut the uh, the hazy coating uh, of the resin that was on the sides. You couldn't even see uh, through there. It was just uh, like a matte finish on there and it had even gone into the canister where the um, where we collect the harvested larvae but anyway I filled this up basically with water that was uh, just tepid added a few ounces of Dawn and I just uh, I filled it up as far as I could so that I could kind of move everything around without trying you know trying to avoid agitating it too much and crushing too many larvae I'm sure I, I, I killed a few in the process but um, the next day I noticed that all the small larvae, all the, the larvae had lived except for a few individuals that had probably been crushed. So I just wanted to, this is now three days later, that was Wednesday, this is uh, Thursday, Friday, this is Saturday, so three days. And uh, I've added some more waste since then, but some of this waste was still remains from that time when I washed it. So I just wanted to show that after, um, I believe it was six ounces, 175 milliliters of Dawn in this uh, 12 gallon unit which has a wet gallon capacity of 10 gallons. Um, I think that's 45 liters or so, I don't recall off the top of my head, but um, it was enough to make a good lather and uh, I could just take the soapy water and I was able to clean the sides off. And since then I haven't seen any, that's a carrot if you don't recognize it, I don't see any indication of ill effects from the dawn and, and like I said it was, I mean it made some good suds. You can see that from the photos that on the uh, post I made about it. So clearly these larvae, most of them are more than three days old. So most of these went through the, the process. Here you can see some of the uh, hardwood lump charcoal. It all got mixed up, which is fine. They love working on corn cobs. I'm also testing unit right now using corn cob pieces, which is a pet bedding, and I think that that might work better even than um, mulch. I'm gonna get in here a little bit and see if I can find. I think it's a fairly dense colony by now. Here's some of the offending bark. You know, I don't know if it will release more resin in the future. I'm gonna go ahead and just. Uh, leave the bark in. I had recommended that people take it out, especially if they aren't too far along in the process. And I probably wouldn't start up a new composter with uh, using pine bark because there's just other there's other options. Um, I have several customers that are testing out the biocomposters using all uh, hardwood lump charcoal, which. I believe could be synonymous with biochar, so look up biochar if you're interested in that. Some people might debate that, but it's essentially biochar, it seems to me.
Anyway, the point of this video was uh, primarily for my customers that might run into the problem uh, to give them a little confidence that there is a solution uh, besides removing the uh, the bark, which would be kind of a pain in the neck. Here you can see that the larvae will work on chicken bones down to the marrow. They just dropped out of there, but they eat the cartilage. I'm sorry, there we go. There's a single larva that we can see in there now eating the marrow out of the chicken bone. So this, um, this is still fairly early in the season since I started this composter. Um, it's probably a month and uh, I'm getting a lot of egg laying recently. Uh, this colony will be uh, two or three times more dense I believe in, within a few weeks. But I said the main point of this was just to uh, give some confidence to people if they want to do an issue with finding that sticky resin uh, due to the pine bark. Uh, if I was to start a new unit now, I, I'm testing. I've been testing uh, the corn cob bedding that I, I mentioned before. I think uh, little little pieces, but the big of dried corn cob. Uh, I mean, the only thing that would make it not uh, uh, something I would recommend would be if it clogged up the, the system and so far the unit I'm testing it on seems to be just fine in terms of uh, how it's draining so it might even be better because it's a little finer uh, texture than the bark. Uh, the main question is will it leave as many air spaces uh, as the as the bark does and you can see that pan down here all of the uh, these really big air spaces this is what we want because um, air will support aerobic bacteria much nicer to work with uh, preferred by the larvae the black soldier fly larvae so that's what I like about the bark um, there's a tremendous volume of air in this waste and uh, but I think that uh, there are several other things including uh, regular wood mulch uh, I don't recommend cypress because it's being harvested faster than it can regrow, but um, I'm getting ready to test some eucalyptus uh, mulch, just regular landscaping uh, mulch made out of eucalyptus, but that is a crop grown specifically for that purpose. As you can see, I don't have um, I don't have any sawdust or coir powder in my harvest container right now, but. Uh, I'm going to be getting that soon. It helps them settle down and begin the pupation process. Let me see if uh, you can see the egg laying that we've had here. Pardon my uh, camera work for a second. Here we go. Okay, so all of these eggs that we're seeing, I don't know if you're able to see those, but anyway, uh, probably have 15 or so, there we go, clusters of eggs laid in here uh, pretty much yesterday, and maybe some the day before, I see some that are a little bit darker. So, anyway, things are going very well in this unit. And um, we'll try and follow up with some more videos now. I got this new camera, and uh, it seems to take nice video when I hold it still. So, thanks for watching. And uh, if you um, have one of my composters, I appreciate the support. And uh, any results that you want to share on the forum is greatly appreciated. This is, uh, you know, essentially a learning process for all of us. Um, you know, I, I tend to think of these units as as prototypes, um, 
you know, so we're all kind of experimenting when we use them, and uh, I appreciate any feedback that you can give me, um, whether an email or on the forum. Well, thank you very much. Uh, check us out at blacksoldierflyblog.com forward slash forum if you want to see what we're talking about in terms of black soldier fly larvae. And I will talk to you next time.